Wheels Tour is coming back to Cleveland this fall. I'll get you a couple of tickets here. He's going to be at the MGM Northfield Park Center Stage Friday night, October the 20th. Ticketmaster.com will have all the pertinent details, but you can win these before everybody else grabs them. End of the week. Two for Lewis Black in October. Always great live. Call 10. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Some people say our country is more divided than ever. But don't ask him. He sucks at math. Alan Cox on 100.7 WMMS. Poor Lewis Black finally gets his turn in the anchor chair over the Daily Show and the writer's strike starts. <laughs> oh. I mean, he's been there for 27 years, right? He was there during the John Stewart administration. He was I think there he was there during the Kilbourne Kilbourne, administration. Yeah. But um, they have him set to host the week of June 20th. And I don't know that that writer's strike is going to be over by June 20th, but I certainly hope for Lewis Black's case uh, that it is. I'd love to see him host the whole week. This is a band called Dog Star. Any Gen Xers? Anybody remember Dog Star? Wasn't uh, Keanu Reeves in this band? Keanu Reeves, short lived band called Dog Star, uh, started in the early 90s. This is from about 2000, which is when they stopped doing stuff. Uh, Dog Star has announced their first new music in 23 years. Keanu must be really bored. I don't know who the singer is. I know that the drummer uh, is another actor, a guy named um, Robert Mailhouse. And you might recognize him if you saw him. Mailhouse, he was Bart's uh, best friend. That's right. Mailhouse. <laughs> Everything's coming up Mailhouse <laughs> with the Dog Star reunion. And they've announced that uh, the three of them, it's a trio, and, and kind of encapsulated that, because they got going in like 91 or 92, so it was pre-grunge. But they were just kind of doing their thing. Keanu Reeves played bass. Mailhouse plays drums. Uh, Robert Mailhouse was a soap opera actor for a long time. I remember him from Seinfeld. He was on an episode called The Beard He's the guy that goes to the opera, the gay guy that goes to the opera with Elaine and she tries to oh, convert yeah. him because they have such a good time and his boss doesn't know he's gay and so they go out and doesn't want his boss to find out so Elaine is his beard and then she really gets into the guy. This George is wearing his toupee, same episode. There's Not conversion. <laughs> you thinking conversion? It did occur to me. I'm... You, you think you can get him to just change teams? He's not going to suddenly switch sides. Forget about it. Why? Is it irrevocable? Because when you join that team, it's not a whim. He likes his team. He's set with that team. But we've got a good team. Yeah, we do. We do have a good team. Well, well why can't he play for us? They're only comfortable with their equipment. Imagine if they try to do that episode now. People's heads would explode. Right. All that 90s stuff that you just... But again, it's not necessarily bad. It's just it, it's a lot of speaking code because you kind of had to talk about things like that in code. Oh, yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah. But people get angry over nothing now. Yeah. Well, it's funny that a lot of the stuff that Elaine goes through... Like the episode where she's dating a guy that is pro life. Yeah. I was like, oh, I would like to date Elaine someday or a woman like Elaine. So I am pro choice just because, and like, I didn't even know what it meant, but I'm like, Elaine is hot. I want to be able to date her. Yeah. If she says pro uh, life is a deal breaker, I am pro choice. So hot. So then that's, that's how I still uh, hot. figured that out for myself. And then, and then I, you know, learned more about it. I was like, oh, good decision. Overall, but pound cake was learning things from the Maury show. You yeah. were learning things from Seinfeld and like this one with the just the way they talk about gay people on this show as actual humans. And like there's an episode where she's going to a lesbian wedding and they're not making jokes about it. They're just saying like this is something that's happening and they're they're real people. 
do living their lives and they're not hurting anybody. It was not how I heard gay people being talked about. So that was eye opening to me. Whereas the not oh, that there's anything wrong with that episode yeah. was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Elaine in the subway taking the uh, yep. the package to the lesbian wedding, and the lady's like another lady on the train. Oh, bride or groom? Oh, there's no groom. <laughs> what? <laughs> A little here's a, so Dog Star Keanu and Mailhouse and the singer are dropping a new album for you Gen Xers who've been waiting for the triumphant return of Dog Star by Keanu Reeves on admission. They were never very good, <laughs> but they had a good time. I remember they played the Milwaukee Metal Fest in 1992 as kind of a goof. So it was like Cannibal Corpse and here's Dog Star and people throwing crap at them. They well, sound especially like with a metal fest. That's not their. They're not metal. No, they went out there just to kind of screw around. Mm-hmm. A little bit of dog star trivia for you. The very first show that a little band called Weezer did was opening for Dog Star in L.A. in 1992. Neat. Dang. And that was the last show they ever played. Yeah, never heard from again. <laughs> Rivers Cuomo, I believe that's his name, went back to Harvard. Never heard from again. So, yeah, the boys are back together. They quietly reunited last summer. Very, very quietly because who was paying attention to Dog Star? But they're going to sell out those gigs. People don't want to see sad Keanu up on stage. They want to see happy Keanu. So they're all 30 years older, and um, Keanu is just as famous as he ever was. That uh, song you played sounds like the... Christian music that they try to make you think is not Christian. You know what I mean? Right, like yeah. hip, <laughs> doesn't yeah. it sound like like hip yeah, worship like, music yeah, that's like, like sneaky rock? Like we're they're trying worship to be rock. a little bit counting crows ish, yeah, but yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. but Jesus. <laughs> but we are here for you type stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah when they start singing about uh, his way yes. and my, yeah. I give it up to him. Yeah. There's a lot of him. But that's not those... until like the third verse. Right. And you're it's into all it. Normal. You're kind of like, okay, soft rock. That is good. And they're like, you are my rock. Okay, that could be his wife. Like, what? <laughs> Doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> and then they mention an angel or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yes. got me again. Oh, wholesome Christian rock. Is there anything like a... you can't do? I put my trust in thee. And you're like, dang it. Damn. Thee. It's a thee. <laughs> the medieval language. It's a the. Well, that's why I love uh, telling my daughter there was a Christian band. You know, a lot of these bands are very, very into cr- being Christian bands until they break out. They don't want to talk about that anymore, right. right? So there's like Christian metal bands, there's Christian whatever, POD, you know. Some of them are a little bit, uh, they're like, yeah, that's cool. That's who we are and whatever. But there's uh, one band years ago that had a huge crossover hit. And I, every time it's on the radio, I'll tell Gwen and my daughter, I'll go, you know, he's singing to Jesus, right? Because it sounds like a romantic song. Mm-hmm. And I love ruining that song for people who don't know that it's about Jesus. It? It's called, oh, what's it called? Hanging by a Moment? Or oh, that's Lifehouse. Lifehouse. Yeah, Christian band. They're singing to, they're singing to G, they're in love with Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but until then, you're like, oh, this is such a sweet romantic song. He's singing to Jesus. Right. I don't know if this was mentioned because I was on the phone getting a winner, but. It was. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> Flyleaf. Yeah. I was going to Flyleaf, I can feel him all around me. Mm-hmm. I used to bump that. That was like 2008, 2009. She's back in the band. They're on. They're doing like incarceration. and. my life. I was like, oh. Yeah. She, she was screaming to my soul. They that, were a Christian rock band. That was in my hot topic phase where I would go in and get like the fake gauges and the and the slap on <laughs> the, the slap on bracelets. Fake gauges? Mm, yeah. The fake gauges, the slap on uh uh bracelets, and then it had a I had a shirt that had tattoos on it on the sleeve, so when you put it on, it looks like you got a sleeve tattoo. <laughs> oh Cody. I was so in my phase. You need to leave me alone. I was finding myself. And Flyleaf was helping me find him. And no one helped uh posers more than hot topic. Hot topic. <laughs> it was a hot topic. Yeah, Lacey Sturm is back with Flyleaf. That's a big deal for people who are into that band. They're doing um they're doing one they're doing incarceration or something. But yeah, the singer is like a big evangelical chick, and you know, she's like, it doesn't necessarily make us a Christian rock band. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> You're writing what you know. That's okay. Just own it. Yes. 
When I drive through the middle of the country, that happens a lot. I'll be in like St. Louis. And I'll be like into the okay. This is pretty good. Oh yeah, this is pretty good. Those satellite uh-huh. Christian yeah. like way FM. You're not like you're like not ready for it, and you're just kind of listen to whatever you know. Nope. Yeah, you're, was... you're 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 barreling through Elkhart, Indiana, right. jamming out to some <laughs> tunes, and then you hear you're right. You hear a the. You go, God damn, damn it, it, it's got Jesus. me again. <laughs> got me. Uh, we were <laughs> my girlfriend. This is so stupid, but it made me laugh so hard. Uh, just had the radio on, but I was connected to Bluetooth, then got out of the car and turned the car back on, and we were on a station that was like a Cleveland station, and there wasn't one in Grand Rapids or that area. And she's like, why are they playing sleep sounds on the radio? <laughs> sleep sounds. <laughs> Like, there's just not a station, stupid. Oh, like static? Yeah. Oh, my God. She's We're in like, between frequencies. She's like, are you listening to sleep sounds while you're driving? And I was like, no, there's just not a radio station. Oh, dummy. <sighs> yeah. Or Moody Bible Institute. There's a, there's a thing in Chicago called the Moody Bible Institute. And they have radio stations around the country. That broadcast is what they call Moody Radio, so it's a religious format, usually non-commercial radio stations. But there's one in Cleveland. I didn't even know. People who are into that stuff, I think that's more like people talking about their ministry or whatever. But yeah, if you get yourself onto a Christian rock station, and quite frankly, if the song's banging, I don't care what you're singing about. Mm-hmm. You got me. Good on you. Yeah, I don't really listen to the lyrics anyway, so yeah. it's not a big deal to me. If you got riffs. If I'm driving on a Sunday, I'll listen to sermons sometimes yep. just to hear what they're saying. <laughs> like the one, where was I? I think I was driving home from my college gig when I was out in New York not that long ago. And it was like. Well, you needed to listen to it after that, you gambling degenerate. I know. I know. What a, what a monstrosity <laughs> of a human being. Um, they, it was like secrets to a happy marriage. It's 430 in the morning and I'm on the road, you know. And uh, they were go. it was just such stereotypical, like. Men, you know, your woman, sometimes she just needs to be heard. And then you hear all the guys like, who right, listens yeah, to women? Right. You know, like, ladies, you can't keep the Steven nagging. Crowder hour. Yeah. <laughs> ladies, you can't keep nagging. And the ladies, oh my God, we do nag. You know, like things yeah. like that. And then, uh, and anybody then they, listening at 4 30 in the morning needs help with their marriage. Right. Well, and then they're like quoting Bible passages about like the man's role and the woman's role. And I'm just listening to it and I'm just like, man. This is still going on. This needs guitars. 3,000 years later, this is still going on. Yeah. It's just crazy to me. It's crazy. It's just, it's not crazy because members of not, my family yeah, right. are so say, heavily like, involved. You have people in your family that are like, they're making all the sense of the world. I and understand. That, and they're yeah. like trying to be funny and I'm just listening to it and I'm just like, it's, it's. I don't know what the right word is. It's it's not shocking because I fully know that people still believe those ways, but it's just like, I don't know, man. Well, and it's not only the guys. The women involved are fully on board. 100% they are. They have never for a second questioned what their role is. They want to be moms, or maybe they don't, but they are quoted these Bible scriptures that tell, well, this is your job as a woman. Yeah, you go, and, you're along with it. I mean, yeah. that's why. But I it, think there's women that are along with it until they aren't and they realize oh wait there's like he's there's a there's a balance there yeah where if they're both doing it the way that they believe the other one should be doing it it's fine but then you get you know a guy like alan just mentioned stephen crowder who's this conservative republican that all these family values and you see how he treats his wife and uh that ain't what they're talking about in the bible right you mean Sometimes they are. They're sometimes. You, sometimes you know, they, they say beat you can women. Kill her. You know? yeah. uh, clearly, you can make it whatever you want. Right. But you know, when they talk about there's this huge misconception that women all think one way, mm-hmm. and that women aren't. You know, they're like, how could all these women vote for so and so? Because they're fully on board with what this guy's all about. Right. Mm-hmm. They want to be like the traditional wife. Dude. And I raise the kids and he goes out and does the thing. And it's like, if that's how it works for them, I mean, I'm not into making life difficult for other people part of it. But if, like, that's how your life works, good for you. As long as you're happy. Uh, that's Not a- every woman is, is uh, mentally and psychologically in chains. Yeah. They benefit. There's a lot of women who benefit a great deal from 
The inner stay-at-home mom. Well, I was going to say, I mean, it sounds douchey to say the patriarchy. No, but that's but true. That's, just, what, that's just kind of what that is. I mean, there's a lot home. of women who benefit from that, and they know that, and they're like, I'm totally fine with this. You their know? husband is a breadwinner. They stay at home. Yeah. They do their wifely duties, and on Saturdays, they get to go get their hair done. You know what I mean? Like, there's, I mean, members of my family who are very on board with that, that that's their role. I was, I mean, A lot the of last- blonde girls in Dallas wearing Uggs year-round yes. on Instagram that are way into this. Yes. And their husbands are make a lot of money, and they're like, hey, listen, I get to enjoy or don't. this money. Or don't make a lot of money. Yeah. Just regular folks living regular lives, but that's, that's the dynamic. And it's a misnomer. For other people to think that like these women are, oh, they don't, they're, 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 you know, psychologically inferior or something. There's a lot of women that are on board with that, with whatever that thing is. Well, and it here's feels the thing. weird to some people in 2023, but you know, there's a reason why that dynamic has stuck around for so long, because it's not just the guys who are into it. I think if you don't have a lot of, and I'm not saying this as a negative thing because it's whatever you want out of your life, right? So if you don't have a lot of aspirations to own a business or to make a name for yourself or to earn your own paycheck, like if that's not something you've ever been interested in, there's plenty of women who are like, I want to stay home. I want to hang out at the house with my kids. I've only ever wanted to be a mom or I've only ever wanted to be a trophy wife or whatever it might be. And it's like, if that's what you're doing and you're happy- Good for you. My mom wanted to be a mom. That's what I mean. Yeah. I couldn't it? do it. She never got to do it, Bill. Mm. It's the biggest Your regret of her life. Your mom never got to be a mom, huh? You know, so... biggest regret of her life. She's still got time. No, I guess she could we'll have find a kid out. at 80. Shut up, Mary. She might. She's not even dating yet. You don't know how old those Shut eggs up, are. Shut up, Bill. <laughs> 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 <She's> <laughs> time. That was a preemptive. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> No, yeah, she's, not, she's not uh, dating. Doesn't mean she's not sleeping around. Uh, she <laughs> could get pregnant. <laughs> she's Be a miracle. Way past, yeah, right. Yeah, but a, she's got a lot of good immaculate uh, conception. Yeah. No, she's got a lot of good. Uh, Faith stirred up with old Jesus up there, so maybe you'll be like <laughs> old Jesus. Old Jesus, he's pretty old now. Yeah, <laughs> two thousand years old. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, whatever, whatever. But anyway, if you find yourself jamming on some Christian rock, good for you. That's that Keanu band. Just because they're into mm-hmm. Jesus doesn't mean they don't know how to play instruments. Right. And one's got nothing to do with the other. Maybe Jesus gifted them by being an exceptional musician, and they're sharing their talent, their God-given talent. Well, it's what, it, it, what's it, more likely is that they put all their frustration uh, from not being able to have premarital sex and masturbate into playing their instrument. So that's why that's they're so why good they're so at good. It. <laughs> Taking it out. Yeah. Oh my God, that guy's picking style is amazing. Did you see all of his finger work? <laughs> yeah. He's got something repressed that he's taking out on that Ibanez. They always play Ibanez. <laughs> <laughs> Every religious band plays Ibanez. <laughs> or a BC Rich Warlock. I can't play a Warlock. That's against the Lord. It sounds demonic. I got to uh, take a break. If you want to send a text, 35192. I will have $1,000 for you. Next shot, uh, grab some money from the Buzzard Bookie is at 430. If you want to go see the Mars Volta, they are back after a decade, and I will have uh, tickets for you to see them on the way back. This is the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free